Good morning, members. We have formed a quorum. It is also time to start. So let's invite the appropriate officers to join us. Uh, the Under Secretary cannot make it today, so we have Miss Amy Yun, the Deputy Secretary for Food and Health, helping us, joined by Ms. Phyllis Poon, Senior Government Counsel from the Department of Justice, as well as uh, Dr. Tina Chen and also Dr. Jeff Lee uh, from the Department of Health. Yesterday we waited too late and yet we weren't able to get the government's response. For this morning we have uh, received a response from the administration and has been tabled and we have got the proposal members from Junius Ho, Xiu Kao Fei and Fernando Zhang. So please find the papers CB bracket two one five zero six sixteen to seventeen bracket zero one etc. I would like to give the floor to Miss Yun. Uh, this is the latest uh, amendments from the administration. Uh, I myself haven't read it, so please take a look, members. Sorry, Chairman. Uh, the amendments uh, involved a lot of uh, graphics, so we spent a lot of time on editing the illustrations, so we weren't able to submit them to you early. But in fact, the idea has already been explore, explored with members. Now, first of all, let's talk about the case of the soft packs. Well, in the law doesn't uh, define what's meant by soft pack, and it doesn't define what is a seal. So there are technical considerations. We studied the matter. On the one hand, we refer to packets that have a seal, but which does not have a lid. If it is going to obscure a part of the health warning, that would be allowed. But then there are requirements, say for example the location. It must be at the top of the pack and there are restrictions concerning the dimensions. We have referred to the specifications of those in the market. We have also made reference to the proposals from Mr. Xiu. So the sizes are more or less the same. At the same time, we have come up with a new set of illustrations. We do allow partial obscuring, uh, but we don't want the uh, image or the wording to be obscured. Therefore, we have got a new set of illustrations for soft packs. At the last meetings, um, Members also said that uh, when the images are put in a landscape orientation, uh, the images may be distorted. So we have come up with a new set of health warning images for landscape orientation. And then for the adaptation period, the Undersecretary already said that since Cassetto, there will be 12 months for adaptation. Since we're going to make adjustments, so we believe that it will be a good idea to extend the adaptation period. Now, after the subcommittee has completed the scrutiny, uh, it will go to the electrical meeting for um, final approval. So it will be accepted again, so we believe that it is better to extend the adaptation by two months. Uh, I can give more details later on. Uh, Deputy Secretary, for the images, I think
you said that you allowed for certain adaptations. Now you have got uh, a set of uh, images for soft packs and a set of images for landscape orientation. So I want to know whether they will be given the same allowance as in the past, or whether you are saying that uh, you have got 12 forms for uh, soft packs, another 12 forms for or landscape orientation, and nothing else would be permitted. Let me talk about the soft packs. It won't involve the question of landscape orientation, so they will be as illustrated in the annex. So that set of images is for soft packs. Well, other than uh, single cigar packing for the landscape orientation um, set, uh, certain uh, zooming in and out will still be permitted. Uh, now, since it is already catered for landscape orientation, even when there is a zooming in or out, the distortion would not be too um, excessive. So they still have to follow the uh, format uh, here. It's a matter of uh, sort of enlarging it or shrinking it. Well, I think the most important point is to meet the 85% threshold, then the image cannot be blurred. That would not be accepted. All right. Mr. Shu Kafei, thank you, Chair. I believe that this must be the last one before we go back to the sitting. Uh, it is not yet known. We can continue with our discussion. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Department of Health. On my part, of course, both the industry and myself um, have studied the matter, and we have had a lot of uh, arguments with the Department of Health. But I'm grateful to you because you have spent a lot of time on um, preparing the images. And Ms. Yuen has just told us that uh, she has taken on board our suggestions and she has made certain amendments. I do welcome this. Of course, we have different positions. Um, at the hearings, um, we might have uh, become emotional. Uh, we might have used strong words when we exchange our views. But I can't avoid that because we need to um, represent the different voices. Had we not taken such a strong stance, you would not have come up with the revised images and another set of images for landscape orientation. I think that is uh, the function of the ledge call. As to the three points made by the administration, I do welcome them. Um, I've come up with four CSAs, two of them uh, in relation to the 12 month period, as well as the case about the soft packs. Now, I'm asking my colleagues to scrutinize the fine print, and if they are similar, then the four CSAs proposed by me um, will see two of them being withdrawn. In other words, only the last two will remain. And then, Mr. Chairman, uh, I have to officiate at a ceremony around about 9 o'clock. So if I may just uh, state my views, that is, I also support Mr. Junius Ho's uh, proposed amendments. That's it from me. Well, there is a technical point. Mr. Xu has got four proposed CSAs, and he would like the those commit, uh, the subcommittee to decide whether they should be proposed by the uh, subcommittee. Well, Mr. Ho, are you saying that you are going to take away two of them? Or are you still seeking the support of the subcommittee today for all the four of them? Well, Mr. Chairman, two out of the four are respectively on the soft pack and the um, 12 month period. Are you going to delete them? Uh, my colleagues are studying them uh, upstairs. So if it is fine, then I'm going to withdraw two of them. While the other two will remain, yes. I just want to clarify with you. Next, Ms. Alex Mack. Chairman, I would like to thank the administration for taking up our views and making the amendments on soft packs and also on the adaptation period of the government's 
As the members, I of course are most concerned about the packaging for soft packs and adaptation period. So I can see that the government has made adjustments. So I will support the government's move. Okay, next one, Wang Ting Kuang. Thank you, Chairman. I share the views of uh, Matt McCune and Xu Ka Fei. The administration has actually done very serious work. Of course, they have addressed the, the demands of the Tobacco Control Office and tightening control on tobacco products. But they've also, at the same time, in view of the circumstances and responses from the trade and has had um, very detailed communication with them and tried to strike a, strike a balance. Therefore, DAB yesterday studied carefully the amendments moved by the government and our party decides to for other members' amendments. We will not support other members' amendments. And uh, for all the effort made by the Bureau, we express our appreciation for it. Thank you. So before the members uh, speak, table before us are several amendments. So while Mr. Seal is here, he has to leave at 9.15. So Mr. Seal and uh, Judith Ho and Fernando Jern, you have time to Introduce your motions to us or amendments. Mr. Xu, uh, my colleagues just found out from the paper that you mentioned about uh, on point two, that is uh, pa paragraph two, you said that you have expressed at various occasions, as well as in our papers and so forth, that uh, the transparent seals on the lid. And uh, in point B, it says the packet bears one specified seal that partially obscures the health warning appearing on the surface of the packet. Are we talking about a surface or two surfaces? Because if you say on the surface, that means only one side of the pack. I just want to clarify this point. Yes? Ms. Poon? Yes. Partially obscured the health warning appear on the surface of the packet right now. Under the main law, the health warning has to be shown on both surfaces. So therefore, here for this point, Well, this is about the seal. Actually, there are health warnings on both services. So here it means that we take it as uh, that on each surface, the seal partially obscures the health warning. So this point refers to two surfaces. So, so there will be, it won't be obscured just on one side, right? Because, yes, the uh, main legislation already requires two health warnings. So on each health warning, it will partially be obscured. So should it be on the surface or on each surface? But anyway, our legal advisor had some views as well. Yes. Well, on the amendments proposed by the government, if you look at I think you may find more details in the um, schedule of the resolution where it's written. Two, three. 
two bracket three. It says uh, a packet is a specified packet with seal. I think we need to clarify this point a bit. Legal advisor, you need to explain which paper you are looking at. Yes, you have CB21535-16-17-01, right? That's the paper we're looking at. And then I was referring to actually on the um, soft packets schedule in NSC schedule. Page, what page is it, legal advisor? NSC, NSC, text of the government's proposed amendments. Page three here B where it says the packet best one specifies still that partially obscures the health warning appearing on the surface of the packet. I think here it explains that Obscures the health warning appearing on the surface of the packet. So just then, as uh, the legal advisor or Department of Justice said, because now you have health warnings on both sides, and here in this part, it mentions that um, the a health warning can be obscured. So. I think this actually uh, provides a clear explanation than what we had just read. And also at the same time, on the same page, page 3, paragraph 3, section 6, amended. Here in A, it says that it must be for a container and packet other than a specified packet of seal in other version A or version B for one of the forms pres prescribed in part 2 of the schedule. and. Porn, uh, Roman letter 2 mentions version C. Can you explain clearly what you mean by version A to C? Who will explain? And also, for the seal for um, soft packets, it's only on one side, both sides. Okay. That means, okay, it'll go to the other side. So, should it be here in the Chinese version, it means one side? So Mr. Xu is worried that it only covers one side, but it should it be both sides? In the Chinese uh, wording, you need to actually show that you mean each surface, each su surface. D of J? Yes. I think we can look into it and see how we can maybe improve the wording. So you consider adding the Chinese character, boy, it means each. Yeah, to make it clear, to make the meaning clearer. And also, um, legal advisor asked about in Annex C, paragraph 3 of the schedule, can you explain a bit more about the versions A to C? Ms. Yun? Yes. The images are in NSA, in NSA of this paper. So we're not referring to the future law, but in the future law, it will be in scheduled images will be in schedule two. If you want to look at the images, I think you need to refer to NSA in the current paper for the Chinese and English versions of the twelve forms. These are images for the soft packs. So we need to um, create the right resolutions and and then put all the images in Schedule 2 later on. So so they will be in Schedule 2, yes. Schedule 2 will make it clearer that is uh, basically 
see, version C, images in version C will be for soft packs. Okay, any questions? Legal advisor? So we need to see your actual clause. Sorry. One more question about cylindrical uh, uh, containers. How about the seals? Will they be use the same kinds of seals or what? For containers, two vertical, two vertical seals. Okay, long vertical seals. Okay, Fernando Jordan. I just like to clarify one thing. So right now, you can have a label that is transparent seals, transparent seals, and the transparent seals can obscure the health warnings. And the seals cannot be wider uh, than 20 mm and longer than 14 mm. So, what percentage of the space of a soft pack is it? You know, from the maximum, in terms of the maximum surface. So, Mr. Jun, you're asking whether. You know, you know, the requirement for eighty five percent would that be reduced? Would it be under fifty five percent, right? Because that would uh create defects in the law. So I think that Miss Yun. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chung, for your view. On the whole eighty five percent well it is arrived at after various rounds of discussion on the soft packs. Technically, initially we did have reservation about making the amendment, but right now, if we let the transparency to obscure warnings on soft packs, uh, whether it's, you know, technically speaking, we think that I think uh, our um, legal provisions can address the concern about soft packs, and it wouldn't really undermine the eighty-five percent. Proposal. Maybe you can, secretary. Maybe you can um, pass the soft packs around so I can see what it looks like. So actually, the would it really reduce the eighty-five percent? Can you tell us with the transparent seal, the health warnings should take up fifty-five percent, but because of the seals on soft packs. The health warnings will shrink to shrink to how many percent? Can you make it clearer? I think our colleagues would do the calculation. The current seals vary in size, can vary in size. So we actually decided on the criterion based on the products now available in the market. But to us, what matters more? Is why well, we need to create a new set of images because if we don't change the images, then what Mr. Jones were about could happen. That is, uh, our coverage would be undermined. So now we've adjusted the wordings and the images so that even there are the transparency. Technically speaking, they won't obscure the most important wordings. So therefore, to us, for our health warnings, the expanded health. Health warnings would not be undermined. I think Mr. Jen was asking about that is uh, 23 mm times uh, 14 mm. With that, looking at the um, labels. Yeah, the 23 to 14 mm. In size, would that reduce eighty five percent the eighty five percent standard? Doctor Lee, thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Doctor Cheng. Um, we allow the seal to obscure the health warning. It depends on where the health warning is placed. 
top or bottom. If the seal is placed at the lower end, it may not obscure the health warning. So the seal may not obscure the health uh, warning as long as the seal is placed in the remaining 15%. Uh, if it is to be obscuring it, um, it will be about 5%. So the impact would be between zero to five percent. So we are not giving concession on the eighty five percent coverage. No, Dr. Lee, you're saying that they have the right either to move the seal up or down. So if they don't then the health warning will be affected by five percent. Now we do not specify whether health warning should be at the top or at the bottom. If it is at the bottom, then um, the health warning will not be affected by the seal. So there won't be any obscuring. But then if the health warning is placed at the top end, then the part of the health warning will be obscured by the seal. Uh, we have made some calculations. According to the dimensions, at most it will be affected by 5%. So Dr. Cheng, the answer is uh, have you can sort of reduce it by 5%. I think the tobacco manufacturers have been fighting hard for it. Now for the seal, I can only see that it is at the top. This is the sample that you are showing. Does the law allow them to have the seal wrapping up for the full dimension? Do you impose any restrictions on the size of the seal? If I may also uh, ask this question, can you mandate the health warning to be placed towards the bottom? Can you not specify in the law? Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, please turn to page two of the annex to your paper. We have defined what is meant by specified seal. In relation to a package of cigarettes, a specified seal will be located at a specified place. Um, it is to be affixed to the top part of the two face surfaces that bear the health warning and the surface that adjoins the top of those two surfaces. That is the place where you open the package. And also the top of the two surfaces bearing the health warning. In other words, we have already uh, sort of uh, confined the location of the seal. That is uh, like the sample that we're showing you at the top instead of on the side or on the bottom. As to whether the seal can wrap the entire uh, package, according to our definition, and please take a look of paragraph two. A package is a specified package with seal when it is. Um, occupying an area not more than 23 mm in width and 14 mm in length. So when the two parts are read together, it means that we are confining the seal to the top part. So to answer Dr. Cheng's question, so in total, uh, it will be reduced by 5%. It must be at the top. The seal must be at the top. And then it will be no more than 23 mm by 14 mm. So I think uh, they have already answered your question. So in reality, uh, we are only uh, enlarging the health warning to 80% coverage. Ms. Yun, well, for the soft pack, we do have this product in the market. So it doesn't mean that we are allowing them to make changes arbitrarily. And in the market, soft packs are the minority. Most of them are in the hard packs. So uh, we are still achieving the 85% um, requirement. We do allow for the sales in the case of soft packs. This is because our understanding is that 
the packaging is different from the hard packs with which bear a lid. For soft packs, they haven't got the lid, and so they need a seal. We believe that by not affecting the overall effect, uh, we allow partial obscuring, but then it will be subject to a lot of restrictions. For a hard pack, they can't tell us that they would like to or they have to affix a seal because we do not allow for any obscuring. So we are only um, talking about the soft packs, and they can't affix it anywhere. And then we have looked at the actual dimensions in the market. In future, they can't say that they would like to make it larger, so it is um, um, being restricted. And in fact, if they use transparent seals, then they cannot um, refer to images in version C because they're not obscuring the health warnings, and then they will just have to do what they are doing now. What about the market share of the soft packs for the general brands? Does anybody know, Dr. Lee? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dr. Chang. Well, for the soft packs uh, in the market, they don't take up a large market share. I haven't got the figures. I believe that it will be about 5% only. So, relatively speaking, it doesn't take up a large share. So for hard packs, uh, since they don't have to seal, so there's no way that they can obscure the health warning. Uh, anybody else wishing to ask questions? If not, it will be my turn. Ray Chen. Thank you, Chair. Of course, I welcome the latest revision from the administration. They are accommodating the soft pack in this way. The manufacturers don't need to worry. It illustrates the principle. Now you can come up with this set of images. So it isn't the size that will make the warning effective. Now perhaps um, we are obscuring the top part of the funeral hall or the top part of the hospital ward or the top part of the bed on which the um, injured uh, foot is placed. Um, it goes back to the original the, or the earlier um, debate about whether it should be 75% or 85%. Um, if we are only obscuring the black part of the funeral hall here, uh, the effect will still be there. So you're being self-contradictory. Now, for the 5% to be taken away, I don't think it is going to have any impact, because in any event, that isn't really the part bearing the uh, important uh, sort of uh, message. Um, it has been stated in the law. Now, Alice Mack, second round. We're talking about the services of the um, soft packs. I think perhaps you need to fine tune both the English version as well as the Chinese version. Can you say on the surface instead of on a surface? Because that will bind your uh, hands and feet when it comes to the Chinese rendition. So perhaps you can change it to on the surface instead of uh, on a surface. Now, let me come back to the images for the uh, cylindrical drum. Um, they want to know whether they have to elongate uh, the image. Now, for the image that you're supplying, it is believed that it will be distorted lengthwise. Now, since you are sort of um, uh, working on the image for the cylindrical drum. Uh, can you also um, do something about it? Thank you, Miss Mac. For the images for the tins, well, currently we have provided two images. Uh, our proposal is that 
I think uh, they can still use the images for the uh, hard packs, but then they will be allowed to have two images. Uh, I don't think there would be any technical problems. No, uh, no one follow up. Then it's my turn. It's a legal issue. Just now, Miss Poon and Doctor Lee have confirmed that in effect it will be reduced by five percent. I want to know whether it goes against your original intention, because it is a fact that you are giving up five percent. In other words, you are not able to achieve the eighty-five percent coverage stipulated in the law. Once you are now introducing the eighty-five percent coverage in the law. Uh, and yet you are not able to achieve it. Do you have any precedents? And what about the um, amendment approved in year 2007? Do we have similar cases elsewhere in the law books? Uh, in order to cater for the different circumstances, uh, you will have an alternative uh, sort of um, arrangement. You can deal with it in two ways. First, you turn a blind eye to it. Second, maybe you have to amend the 85% coverage because you are not imposing the 85% coverage uh, requirement on soft packs. In fact, it will be 80% only uh, because you are sort of uh, uh, being self contradictory. Ms. Poon, I think it is a very good question. First of all, in terms of the design, For the amendment order that has been gazetted, we are saying that we want an 85% coverage. The principle hasn't been changed. The only difference is that for soft packs, when there is a specified um, packet with seal, and when there is a partial obscuring, then we are providing for an exemption. So. For Annex C, if you turn to page 3, we have now introduced a new paragraph that is H capital A. But generally speaking, um, it says that um, the health warning cannot be obscured by any fixture. But then for the new H A, we are now saying that uh, we do provide for an exemption. In other words, subparagraph H is not contravened in relation to a specified packet with seal by reason only of the affixture of a specified seal to the packet. In other words, the effect of this case is that when we have a packet uh, which is a specified packet with seal, it is not going to breach subparagraph 8. The overall coverage requirement has not been changed, therefore. Ms. Tang. I do not see any definition for soft pack. I come to my question. Ms. Yun has said that in future, uh, such an exemption cannot be invoked for the hard packs. They can't invoke uh, this provision to say that they can obscure the health warning. I just wondered if you can further clarify it. Say, for example, by introducing a definition for soft pack, or you say that in future, the packaging of the secret packs cannot make use of this exemption to reduce the image of the health warning by 5%. Ms. Poon, let me take the first question about the definition. Well, in fact, we have already defined soft pack. We don't call it by the name soft pack. We are saying that it is a specified package with seal. For the new HA, this is also mentioned. Now we say that um, 
when there is an affixture to a specified package with seal. So if you go to page 2, towards the end uh, of that page, we are saying that uh, for section 5, we are going to add a new paragraph 2a. For the purpose of paragraph 3, a package is a specified package with seal, and then it doesn't have a lid when closed. The lid, um, oh, or when closed, uh, it forms uh, part of a surface that bears the have warning, and the package bears a specified seal, and that will partially obscure the have warning. And thirdly, the area of the warning so obscured does not exceed 23 mm in width and 14 mm in length. In other words, um, we have already sort of uh, stated the three characteristics of a soft pack. So that should avoid abuse of the exemption in the future. Okay, next one, Mr. Wong Ting Kwong. Just then, the administration has explained to us. The 85% will be unchanged. It's not that they can have 80% only. Only that part of it could be obscured. So he was trying to answer for you. I didn't, I didn't want to answer for her, but because I understood what she meant. Okay, any other members with use? If not, then... Uh, Hand over the time to Mr. Julius Ho, who is seeking a an amendment as yes, a CS amendment. So, do you want us to have the amendment in the name of the subcommittee? If so, then we need to have the majority support of the members. Mr. Ho, please. Yes, I'm um, introducing to you my amendment. Concerning Section 34E and 5B2 for the um, cigarettes, the health warnings proposed by the, the size of the health warnings, 85% move by the government, uh, it be lower to 70%. 70%. That's my amendment. And another amendment concerns uh, cigar. Tobacco that is to uh, under four A five B two and section six B and seven B two simply put is intended for uh, whether it's a gut box hundred percent if five percent coverage on the health warnings be reduced to seventy percent. There are three reasons for it. Because this way we can have consistent display of the health warnings and avoid confusion. So therefore, lowering it to 70% is something reasonable. And also, do we need to um, take such a drastic step in one go? I don't think so, because having listened to the views of the trade and explanations from the administration, I feel that even the bigger the coverage is, the greater deterrent it will be uh, on asking on uh, non-smoking. But from 85 to 70 percent, the gap, you know, is it that big that uh, the effect will be very noticeable? I think I don't think there is actually much difference in practice. So the percentage proposed is more of an uh, based on academic reason. So we need to address the issue of counterfeit sale seal. If we don't be you know, uh there are still smokers now, but if they end up buying fake products, you know, with a proposal to uh enhance the uh, image of health warning to eighty five percent, if people end up buying fake cigarettes and the negative consequences consequences would be great. In the long run, we need to think about how to ban smoking. That's our common goal. But right now, at this moment in time, jumping from 50% to 85% is a quantum leap, and I don't see a need for that. 
So I would hope that 70% would be reasonable too. I just heard from um, the DS today that the 85% would remain unchanged, but the uh, health warnings could be um, adjusted downwards so that I could be still at the top. That is sort of a compromise to her, but it shows that the administration is having an open attitude and is willing to address concerns of the trade. I, I welcome that, I appreciate that, but why not? You know, why not right now reduce 85% to 70%? That should be feasible, and that can do away with other amendments because it would let people know that all the warnings are just uh, or the the obscuring will be up to seventy percent, and then that would actually clear up, clear up, send a clearer picture to people. And I hope that our views committee will support my amendment. And in the name of the subcommittee, move the amendment. My proposal reducing eighty five percent to seventy percent, I think, is a reasonable adjustment. I think that's it for now. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Xu is not here now, and Mr. Ho just explained his amendment. So I asked the administration to respond to these amendments. Fernando Zhu, when he's back, he can speak when he's back, and then we have to make a decision. I believe members need to let us know what you think on the amendments moved by the three members, whether you agree that we should make proposals in the name of the subcommittee. Once we have got the majority support of members of this subcommittee, then we can go ahead. If not, then indeed each member can in your name, own name, when the bill is um, tabled before let's go for third and second reading, you can still make amendments on your own. Okay, Ms. Yun, thank you members for your views. On the percentage changes, I think for various packets, uh, packs, uh, there could be different percentages. So we don't see a need to have a consistent figure in place of our different arrangements now for different packaging. I think all along uh, we've been talking about the 85%, but the problem is what to do with the remaining 15%. We have seen that many tobacco products they use the remaining space um, to try to make their products look more attractive. So therefore, um, there is this trend for plain packaging. Understand, plain packaging could be even more controversial. It may need even more time for discussion on that. So we want to settle with the 85 percent first. So we don't think that on the percentage is that we would uh, back down any further. Because it, we need to talk about what to do with the fifteen percent more on the adjustments for the soft packs for soft packs that is if they use the seal that they have been using all along, then the fifteen percent will be reduced in size in early discussions. People wonder whether we should go this way to the fact that um, it will have less space compared to hot packs. So we want to remain, uh, retain the maximum of 15% of the service. And we think that uh, we need to work on our images so that the um, effect of the health warnings will not be undermined. But the remaining 15%, as for its label, uh, where they can put their trademark and so forth, well, it's not just about the 15% on both services, actually, because there are four side portions for counterfeit labels and other labels to be affixed onto the pack. So therefore, technically speaking, if feasible, we would allow the um, seals to be put on the soft packs, and the 15% were still sticking to it. So members, any? Okay, you, Xi Wing. Thank you, Chairman. 
Just then, um, Mr. Ho said that he wants to adjust 85% to 70%. I don't think there's a need for that because the latest amendments are intended to send a strong message to the public that smoking is hazardous to health. If we have the downward adjustment, as proposed, that it seems that the government is wavering in its stance. Now the change in the um, seals for soft packs, I think, already addresses members and concerns of the trade. And Mr. Fernando Zhang is not here, and he wants to adjust it to raise it to ninety percent. If that's the the adjustment is made, then that means we will have to go back to square one, and that because the trade may have a uh, New views, and the government may have to explain the technical issues and so forth, and the whole uh, legislative process will be delayed. So now, since the government has already made adjustments, so I think we should just stick to the amendments proposed by the government alone. So, Mr. Yu, you will not support Mr. Shu's amendments either, right? Yes, I won't. So far, if no members have questions, I don't see well. I don't see most of our members at this stage support the with the amendments moved by the three members. Fernando Zhang is not back yet. I'm sure he has more to say when he's back. So it's difficult for the subcommittee to have a consensus, saying that say that it would on behalf of Mr. Xu or Mr. Whole to move amendments, but that doesn't rule out the possibility that in uh, second reading, third reading, members can still propose your amendments. So is that clear to you all? So is that what members will agree on as well, Ms. Matt McCune? Yes, Chairman, I agree. If our members want to move amendments, they can do it on their own. The subcommittee cannot reach any consensus on the amendments anyway. Uh, FTU supports the government's amendments. Uh, we won't support other members' amendments. Okay, fine. Jeremy Tam. Yes, Chairman. I, yes, yeah, similarly would not support the amendments moved by the members. If they wanted to have amendments, they can move it in the council meeting. As for the 85%, Put before us is very reasonable for cigars. It's only the hundred percent at the back that I'm a bit worried that it may not be feasible. But other than that, no other issues. But I wouldn't support the latest amendments. Ted Hui, yes, Chairman, I agree with what you say, Chairman. That as for you know. The committee and the business committee had had a lot of discussion on the percentage per se. I don't see there is a proposal that can get the consensus of the whole committee. So to me, I think eighty five percent should be the way to go, and in the future, we should go in the direction of plain packaging in the future. So I don't see the um that the proposed amendments by members are ideal, so I would support the government's latest proposals, and members can move amendments in th on their own. So, members, any other response to views on the members' amendments? Okay, if not, then I think this sub subcommittee will be the last um, meeting. There could be some wordings issue with the wordings like Ms. Alice Mack just mentioned, whether in the English version or the Chinese version, you know, to, to make it clear that you mean each surface. So there may be some final fine tuning. That could also affect whether there will be new amendments. The, the deadline for us to move amendments is seventh. Today is the second. When would you give us the final text? If the final text is not okay with us, then members may move further amendments. Because if they're not satisfied with it, they will do so. So you need to act very quickly. Monday, okay. So once we receive the paper from the administration on Monday, we'll circulate it to members, and then we we'll ask members on the government's latest text whether you have other. Questions or members want to call a new meeting 
or whether you have new member or new amendments for this committee to look at. I will try to do what we can before June the 7th so that members have a chance to express their views for the last time. So Mr. Fernando Jung is back, so you have time to explain your amendment. You're also free to express your views on the other amendments. Are you engaged? We can try to seek uh, the support of the other members. Let me sort of just tell you what happened a moment ago. Just now, no member has agreed to ask the subcommittee to move your amendments or the amendments from the other two members. I'm sorry, I have to go between the two uh, meetings because uh, next door uh, we are having the meeting of the um, committee on the increase of minibus uh, seats. Uh, I would like to enhance the coverage uh, restrictions from 85% to 95% for the cigarettes and then for cigars from 70% to 75% and then for the curved surface of a container in the shape of a cylindrical cylindrical drum from 85% to 90%. Um, the amendment is a simple one. The intention is to move towards plain packaging, and this is the world trend. I understand the government's uh, position. From the government's response, I think it is quite clear. What's been said is that the larger the health warning image, the more effective uh, it will be. So plain packaging, that is 100% coverage, would be best. And then we have standardized um, brand names, etc. Um, it has been purchased elsewhere. Australia is taking the lead. UK has also made a decision. Um, some other countries are following suit. At least 14 countries are in the process of legislating for it, or um, they have passed a piece of legislation ready to be enforced. The World Health Organization has also made it clear from previous studies um, it has been shown that plain packaging would be the way forward. I understand that if we start to adopt plain packaging, uh, it will go beyond the scope of the amendment order. In other words, we have to amend the principal ordinance itself. Therefore, on this occasion, I'm not able to make a change to adopt plain packaging. So 90% would be the furthest that I can go. Let me give the floor to the administration. I think uh, just now the administration already said that they are in fact moving towards plain packaging, if, although just now you weren't uh, in the uh, conference room. Ms. Yun, yes, we know that more and more countries are adopting plain packaging. Um, in our amendment order, we started to float the idea of 85% uh, around about the middle of 2015. We would like to see the early implementation of the new coverage uh, uh, seal, uh, limit. The larger the health warning, the better, of course. For the proposal that has already been made, I hope that this can be introduced first as to the long-term uh, objective, like uh, moving towards plain packaging. Uh, we will study the matter further. So they are not opposing your um, amendment. They just want to get 85% first. Well, um, we have spent more than two years to achieve 85%. There is also the adaptation period, um, in other words, uh, by the time that we move to 85%, many other countries will have already adopted plain packaging. In other words, we'll be lagging behind. Uh, for the amendments from the other two members, I'm afraid I can't support them because they are trying to reduce the coverage from 85% or they would like to extend the adaptation period. I'm afraid I cannot support them.
Let me also report that for Mr. Chu, uh, he has uh, given us his notice that is among uh, his amendments. He's now taking away his amendment in relation to section 6 concerning soft pack and also uh, the last one uh, that is um, the amendment to section 11 concerning the um, period. So uh, he is only retaining the amendments contained in page 1 and page uh, 3. Uh, he would like to ask the subcommittee to move his amendments, uh, but I don't see a consensus here. If there aren't other views, I think I can adjourn the meeting now, and then on Monday, the administration is going to show us the final draft. On the 7th of June, it will be the final, uh, it will be a deadline for uh, giving notice to move amendments. At today's House Committee, I will report to the House Committee about our progress achieved today. So on the 14th of June, we are going to debate and endorse the amendment order. Helena Wong. Let me ask a question. I don't know whether it is the right time to ask this question. For the images, we do have many images. There is one with a child, showing a child. Is it a sort of, uh, is it showing the image of a genuine child? I want to know whether he is of the right age to give agreement to let his image be used on the health warning. So it's a matter of the children's right. Dr. Lee. Thank you, Dr. Wong, for your question. Well, it's a model. Of course, uh, when we took the photograph, we had secured the agreement of his parents. I am fully under we fully understand your uh, point. The picture was taken three or four years ago. Probably the child has grown and his um, appearance um, must have changed. Well, uh, the child isn't yet at a uh, lawful age uh, to give uh, consent. You may say that the parents uh, have agreed uh, on his behalf. I don't know whether the child would one day uh, regret for having this picture taken. Um, do you have his recent photograph to, uh, to show a contrast or to have the purpose of comparison. Do you really need to have a child's uh, photograph shown on a um, packet um, circulating in the entirety of Hong Kong for other um, photographs? Um, the persons shown in the photographs do not have their front uh, sort of uh, being taken. Uh, I don't know whether I need to move his CSA. Dr. Wong, perhaps you can suggest another model for them. I think they can reconsider it before the 7th of June. I think you could have taken a um, sort of, um, you, you can take another uh, view of the image. Well, in the light of um, Dr. Wong's uh, concern, uh, please provide more information, say whether there has been parental uh, agreement. But I believe that if the child understands that uh, he has played a role in helping to um, reduce smoking, I think uh, he will be happy. For the other adults in the images, I think they have sacrificed a lot. I think they don't look as ugly as that shown in the images. So they sacrificed their good looks for the sake of uh, the smoking uh, secession drive. I don't think it's right for us to have further um, discussion about that particular child. So perhaps the tobacco control uh, office can get more information to answer Dr. Wong's question. If there aren't other questions, so meeting adjourned. Thank you.